Hi guys, I'm Grumpy Rabbit for me. You can call me GR, Grumpy Rabbit, or Renee. This is the second gameplay of Skinwalkers, which was developed by Snow Owl. Uh, last time we got around to this point where we heard the scary noise, so I thought I'd backtrack a little bit to this point and then go from there. And here we go. Hey, wake up, there's something outside the tent. Oh, what? I'm not sure. I'm sure there is lots of squirrels and shit. Go back to sleep. Hey, is Michael here? Yeah, I'm here. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. The thing outside looked like you. It's probably some animal. I don't think we have to worry about a fox or whatever. Take it easy and go back to sleep. Well, alright then. Maybe it was just some animal. Those sounds. A few minutes later. <laughs> Damn, that still gives me shivers. <laughs> okay, drop it, whoever that is. I want to sleep already. It wasn't me. Me neither. That didn't sound like any of our voices. Oh shit, now I'm never going to be able to sleep. Sh should we go outside and look? What if it's some crazy psycho with an axe? All the more reason to check it out. It's not like the tent is some kind of impenetrable fortress. Seriously, if that was one of you guys, tell me right now. This ain't funny anymore. Okay, everyone get out together and check it out. I ain't going alone. What the heck is that? Someone was just on here. Shit, 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 shit. Calm down, so I'll see you have four against one here. I'll be fine. It'll be fine, sorry. Where's the dude that's some kind of black man him? I mean, he killed this little critter, didn't he? Michael's right, we gotta get the hell out of here. We can't just stop and leave, but we have the night, but it better stop. Screw our stuff, I'm not staying here another minute. Fine, we'll leave, but at least bring the flashlight to food and water. I think you're overreacting that we haven't seen anyone. We haven't even seen anyone. Still, someone or something left this dead creature here. We can't ex exactly go back to sleep, no worries. I guess you're right, I'll go get the flashlight. Everyone bring some stuff you think you need. A couple of minutes later. Alright, let's go. Sunny. It's not pitch black. This fog is really annoying though. So, are we, we are going back to the cabin, right? I guess that's the plan. Later, it became obvious Darren had no idea where we were going. He was swearing and looking all around. We've been walking for awfully long now. Are you sure we're on the right path, Darren? I've walked this path hundreds of times. We're on the right path. I don't recognize anything from when we were, were walking to the cab, though. I said we were on the right path. But as time went on, it became obvious that Darren had no idea where we were. Darren couldn't find the path. Maybe it was the fog. Maybe the darkness. Maybe something else. Either way, we were lost. I kept looking behind me. I was having that feeling where you think someone is watching or stalking you. Check behind your shoulders, guys. I nearly tripped and over Celeste when she fell. Oh. Yeah, let's just... Uh. I took Celeste's hand and dragged her to her feet. It's getting even mistier. If not for the flashlight, I wouldn't have any idea who she was. I recognize that tree. We're getting to the cabin. Again, I had the feeling that something was watching me. My gut was screaming at me that something, somewhere, was wrong. I realized the sound from earlier was back softer, but still present. 
I started looking around, panicking. Did a head count, or more accurately, silhouette count. Me, Celeste still holding my hand, Darren in the lead, Michael to the left. Who the heck was the guy beside Michael? My grip on Celeste's hand tightened and I quickened my pace. I thought about shouting out, but it was worried. If I did, maybe the thing would turn around and jump Michael or something. I didn't know what to do. I ran my fingers along a knife I'd brought from camp. Then the cabin appeared out of nowhere. The mist was starting to disintegrate around us. It was easier to make out who everyone was now. I looked at the thing next to Michael. She looked just like Celeste. The thing I hand, whose hand I was holding leaned in front of me. It wasn't Celeste. I'm recording. Okay. I should have ran or screamed, but my body was clenching up for no reason. The thing turned and walked into the mist. I caught up with the others as they entered the cabin, practically in tears. They couldn't find the car and were arguing about where we put it. I told them what I saw. Obviously, they didn't believe me. Still, everyone hurried inside and locked the door. He followed us here. Find he really wants something from us. He doesn't seem to have anything to break down the door with, though. What the hell does he want with us? Hell if I know, ask him. So, uh, real quick, if you didn't... Yeah, I suppose not. If you don't grab Celeste's hand and help her get up, what happens is... Uh, I shouldn't write it for you guys. Maybe I'll put up another one to show you guys. So, we have to be really careful with our next couple of cho choices. Because it can automatically take you to a bad ending. Check with Michael. Darren. big cabin. The cabin I stayed at was much smaller. It's basically one really big room and then two separate rooms and then a little shower area. It was really nice though. Okay, let's go try and get on this dude. It's cool, man. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, people do that. Okay, let's go check out. This doesn't seem like a situation to be flipping about. Okay, uh, let's see. There we go. Thanks a lot.